Okay, folks, listen, I know why you're here, right? Because today we making a chicken Big Mac, and guess what? We doing it AB's way. Now, we finna get down to the nitty gritty, right? So listen, this right here is a chicken breast, obviously, right? So what I wanna do is, you know, it's real, real thick. So if we gonna fry it, this part down here will be ready way before this. Being the breast, that means it's gonna dry out and all of that. I'm gonna show you guys just what you gotta do, right? So we gonna go ahead and take the saran wrap, put this over the top. Now you wanna get yourself a meat tenderizer. That's this right here, because I wanna flatten this and get it all one level. To be honest with you, I would like to get it about that level like how it is around here. So I'm gonna grab this. All right, so I want you guys to look at this right here. So what I do is I take these, of course I'm not gonna stick this raw bun on this raw chicken, right? I just take this over the top and make sure I got a good size there. And then I come over here to make sure I got a good size here. And once I have that, then that tells me folks that I'm ready to go. Now, I got a Ziploc bag right here. I want you guys to pay attention. You wanna cut this. Once you have it down, you got it like this, we gonna marinate this. We didn't already really tenderize the chicken already, but we gonna do a little bit more. I'm gonna do a couple of more pieces cause everybody gonna want one of these so it ain't no need for me to, you know, fake the funk. All right, so now I got another couple. Right, we put these in the bag. I'm not gonna bore you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and just get these going. You know what I mean? Cause I said I'm gonna make three. Uh, look like I'm gonna have to make probably six. So what I'm gonna do is, let me get this out the way. Let me clean this up and let me show you what I put in there. And what we are gonna do is we are gonna marinate. I say I like to marinate is when it comes to chicken up to four hours, you know what I mean? But today, I'm being honest with you, I'm gonna go ahead and marinate, marinate these overnight and I'm gonna see y'all in the morning. Stay tuned. Now, with your chicken in the bag, right? You guys can put this in a bowl, put some saran wrap over it, you know what I mean? But when I'm doing my own dishes, this is how I get down, right? So I'm gonna add this to it, which is buttermilk, right? And then we're gonna cover it with the pickle juice. Now listen, we didn't already beat it and you know, tenderize it already, but this right here gonna take it to a whole nother level. And again, I'ma just say by me using, you know, chicken breast, you know what I mean? Uh, trust me when I tell you guys, you know what I mean? So I'ma do it like this. And no, you don't taste the pickle in there. I got it. Some of y'all gonna be like, can you taste that? No, you cannot. But you see that right there? When I come back tomorrow, I'm gonna show you why this is what McDonald's wish they could make. All right, so look, it's been overnight. I just went ahead and put this in here just in case we had any leakage. You don't want to clean your refrigerator, right? So we got that there. I've already added some more oil inside of my, you know, my Dutch oven. I'm bringing this up to temp. We want to start at about 350. Anywhere about 320 to 350, because look, I'm gonna fry these twice. But I want you guys to pay attention to this right here. Come here. You see these trays right here? I picked these up off of Amazon, make my life a whole lot easier, easy to keep up with, right? So if you guys are doing any type of bread and station, you can call it how you want to. You can go wet, you know, you can go uh, uh, flour into your wet, into your dry, then you can go back, however you want to do it. But I just thought these was neat. Anytime I find any of these things like this, I'm gonna let you guys know. You guys can check down in the comment section uh, below, excuse me, in the description uh, box, and I'll put it like some kind of link to this. These right here make sense. Now, I am setting up a bread station, and then check this out. This is gonna be my wet, right? So I'm coming out of this and gonna go into dry. But I just wanted to show you guys this right here, because I'm gonna really be getting down with this, you know, this fall. Now, as I'm waiting for this to come up to temp, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my flour and my cornstarch, and we just add it here. Now, I got you guys, you're going to say, man, I don't need to do that. I'm going to use a bowl. But if you spend as much time in the kitchen as I do, I like to have all of the nice uh, utensils. You know what I mean? They're very inexpensive. You know what I mean? Uh, just levels up my game, make me feel great. You know what I mean? And I'm able to do what I want to, you know, do what I want to do. Achieve that good, good food. Not saying you got to have that, but you got to have these. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take, and now we want to add all of our ingredients, you know, our dry ingredients, right? Now, I want you to pay attention to this before I go ahead and mix this with this whisk. You see that right there? I want to make sure you guys got enough seasoning. And I'm going to say something to some of you new people out there that don't really uh, haven't had nobody ever say this to you. When I get through mixing this and getting everything to marry and completely combine, you have to taste your flour. If your flour doesn't have any seasoning in it, folks, we got a problem. So what do we do? We just make an adjustment. This ensures that what we make has great breading on the uh, outside and it's good. That's gonna be one of the secrets. The other secret is this right here. 
It's the fact that we marinated that. The pickle juice was like a real secret, you know what I mean? A lot of people don't know that. Usually people put it in uh, buttermilk, add a little hot sauce. You can put a couple of things in there, you know, as far as seasoning. But listen, that's gonna be seasoned. This is gonna be super tender. And again, this is gonna be what McDonald's wish they was making. Okay, so look, I went and got my candy thermometer. Now we finna look and see where we at, right? Submerge this in the, you know, inside of my oil. We're gonna let that come up and we're gonna get a reading, folks. What we're looking for, again, is about 320. That's cool. Because what I wanna do is I just wanna put it in there. I'm gonna probably let it just stay in there for about 20, maybe, excuse me. I'm gonna let it stay in there for about three minutes. You know what I mean? And uh, we just see how the bread will look. Then we're gonna take it out, let it completely drip dry right here on my cooler rack. And then we're going back in there to achieve 165. All right, so now we're finna make our <laughs> mac sauce. I gotta say it that way, man, because the reason I say it that way, because look, this is not probably like the truest way to make it. I know how to make, I can get close to the mac sauce. You know what I mean? But this right here, we want to just put this in here like this. And this always starts with a little bit of that mayo. So after my mayo, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna give you guys another pro tip. Now this really, is, I guess it's like personal, you know, personal to you guys, how you like it, right? But if you look, I'm using Mount Olive Sweet Salad Cubes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this and I like to let some of the liquid just drain off. Right, reason being, I don't want that to become soupy. I want it to stay with a little bit of that, as much of that consistency of the mayo as I can. All right, so now we back over here. You guys know what I call this, just that W sauce, right? So I'm just gonna give this like a couple of little shakes. You know what I mean? Uh, again, I love the flavor, but I don't want this to be too soupy. Whew, that's enough right there. That's enough to just put a hint, right? So now we're gonna come with the, when it comes, let me give this a shake. I know you guys are familiar with this mustard. If you don't shake it up, you know how that, it gives you that liquid out of there? We don't want that in there. We want straight mustard, right? So I'm just gonna give it a little bit and then we'll check. Now this is what I keep close to me. Shake up my ketchup. Talk to me. Is it Heinz or is it Hunch? Y'all tell me. Just put a little bit in here. That's how I get a little bit of that color, right? Right? Now look at the color. Starting to look like Mac sauce. But this is AB sauce. Some of you guys make something like this. But remember, I was talking about that consistency. See how it's not just running off of there? That's what you want to have. Come on in here and look. That's what you should have, something like that. And the cool thing about this is, listen, we got all the ingredients right here. We can just keep doing whatever we want to achieve the flavor that we like. But don't forget, on my website, smokingandgrillingwithab.com, that's W-I-T-A-B.com, I'm going to get you guys right. The full, downloadable and it's gonna be printable, you know what I mean? Our recipe is there. All right, so now we just wanna, you know, shred our lettuce, right? All right, so my temperature got a little high for me. I think right now, if you guys take a look at it, it should be about 360. You know what I mean? I'm letting it come down, but first thing we are getting ready to do, well, I'ma just say, meanwhile, I'ma come out of our brine. Oh man, right? Look at that right there. Now I like to get as much of this off as possible, and I got it, they're a little bit on the thin side, but you want them that way. I'm not gonna overcrowd it. We just use these two right now. Now I'm gonna take one clean hand, which would be this one right here. This would be the one that I use to become wet, right? So I'm gonna just take some of my seasoned flour. And if you guys pay attention, you could look at the flour and say, yeah, that's seasoned. This is what I'm talking about, folks. All right? So let me just go ahead and flip this one over. One thing about that flour, boy, when you drop something, it kick a little wind back and boom. Now, you see this right here? Look, I'm gonna pick it up. You see how I bend this right here? And we don't have nothing. We want to get a little bit of that everywhere. You know, some of our seasoned flour everywhere. You know what I mean? So this is why I push it. If it was like another piece of type of meat, I would take it in my hand and just squeeze it. I want to get it everywhere. See how like now when I do it, it's not as bad, but we got some over here. Take your time, folks. Get your bread on there, right? 360 is not gonna hurt me. I like to use 350 and I know it's gonna pull down anyway, but don't forget, we only gonna be in here just for a couple of minutes, right? I mean, when I say a couple, that's what I mean. So I look at it like this, you see it had time to go ahead and soak. So now I'm gonna put it in here. Now, this is how I do mine. I wave this back and forth like this, let that kind of like seal up. Then when I come here, I go and let it release it away from me, like that, right? I'm gonna do this one right now just to show you guys. So I'm gonna concentrate on this one because we want this to be just right. Now, as you guys can look right here, you can see that I got myself another cooling rack because after two, a couple of minutes in here, I'm gonna take that out and put it here and let it drip dry. We're gonna let it cool. Then I'm gonna start doing them two by two. So after two minutes, I want you guys to look at the color. You know what I mean? We just trying to get a little bit of the color on here, get it cooked. Now what you're gonna need is, you're gonna wanna get yourself one of these meat thermometers. 
right? I have these in red and black, but you see how I said smoking and grilling with AB? Then you wanna test it. But I'm telling you, it's not ready now because we only been in that hot grease only for about, mm, I'm gonna say about two and a half minutes, right? So the next thing is I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these. So let me go ahead and get this going. Let me check, make sure I done cooled a little bit. It's best to do this when it's about 320, 330. So I'm gonna let this cool to that and I'm gonna do it. We're gonna achieve the color. We're gonna let them all stage. Once I got them all staged, we're gonna raise it. We're gonna go to two, uh, 350 and then we're gonna cook them till we get to 165. Don't forget, we just wanna go a couple of minutes, right? But look at that right there. Now we take this over here like this, put that down and finish off the next two. All right, so my temp went up to 330 right now. I'm done, you know, putting these in, right? So this was like the first one. I'm gonna go ahead and just drop that in like that. Now we looking for 165, folks. Real simple. You know what I mean? Uh, so put them here. And don't forget, we gotta have some type of read thermometer, you know what I mean? Uh, so that we were able to even read them, right? So here it is. It's not gonna take long. All right, so listen, now that I got my chicken, it's cooling a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead. Now you guys wanna do this like, I'm gonna say do it at the same time, you know what I mean? But it's a lot trying to keep up with the temperature because you don't wanna overcook, you know, you don't wanna overcook your chicken, right? So I kinda like stayed over that way. But if you guys got a better way of doing it, you can do it that way. That way all the stuff is ready at the same time, right? So I'm taking mayo. I'm opening up that discussion right now, for, especially for those who don't know, uh, who have never had mayo, or so they think they never had mayo on a bun, you know what I mean? I prefer to have the mayo over butter. This gives me a more of a real buttery taste than anything, you know? So if you had it, let me know down in the comment section below. Some of y'all finna chime in, I know, cause a lot of people didn't know, and now they tell me when they see me doing it, they be like, AB, I don't do it no other way but the mayo. All right, so let's look at this one. Oh yeah, that's what you wanna have. Actually, I'm gonna set this on there too, just to get a little char on the bottom. You see that one right there? Yeah, that's good. This one right here, I'll rotate that one. And that one I'm gonna put in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off. We'll just let these two stay on here. I'm gonna move that one over there because obviously it's a little bit on the hotter side over that way. And we're gonna go ahead and get that going. But look at that right there, folks. Oh my goodness. And you wanna know, are they soft? Whew. All right, so everything is ready. Tell me that don't look like a work of art. You know what I mean? As far as toasting your buns, that's it right there, right? So the first thing I'm getting ready to do is I'm gonna take this one right here and I'm gonna go ahead and set him down right there, right? Now we're gonna do it this way. I'm gonna put my sauce on there. We're gonna put a little bit of the shredded lettuce. Then we're gonna put the cheese. Why? Because we want, I want you guys to think like, why would he put the cheese on top like that? The reason being, we want the, the chicken to go ahead and help the cheese melt, right? So I like to put a little bit like this on here. I know it looked like I'm putting it on heavy, but there's a reason to it. It's a method to this madness, right? Put it on like that. Now I'm finna come with this American, I really wanna call it, you know, just the way we call this that good cheese. That's all I'm gonna say. We take that. We go ahead and just lay him on there like that, right? And now I'm gonna take one of these patties right here. Check it out, and I'm gonna put this right here on top. All right, now we gotta have a center bun. Let me go on over here and get that. Here go that center bun, folks. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it. You know what I mean? Uh, don't have to go as heavy on one side, right? For me, I like to put a little sauce right here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set this down. Now, I did say this was like a Big Mac, a chicken Big Mac, right? So, we finna get it right, folks. And then we are gonna do, go ahead and just repeat the same thing that we had down on the bottom one. And it's getting hard for me to talk because you guys can hear it in my voice like, yes, sir. After the lettuce, now I'm gonna go ahead and just add my pickles on here. Now you guys add whatever type of pickles you want. You know what I mean? Uh, but we're gonna put those on just like that. 
and now I'm getting ready to take this slice of cheese and put this over the top like that and guess what folks we finna put that last patty right here on top All right now we're gonna go ahead I'm, uh, which one do I want to make a star which one of these look the greatest uh, both of them look good you know what I mean so now we come here with this put a little bit on here I love the sauce this what ties it all in right and then talk to me about the pickles folks if you making this for yourself what kind of pickles are you guys using for me I love bread and butter you guys let me know what you would do right so now I'm gonna take that put this on here just like that and I promise you this is the one they wish they was making Ooh -wee. all right folks look here they are this is more so to mimic this right here. So this is my version. I got it. The patties are a little bit bigger. You know what I mean? But that's real crispy chicken right there. This is McDonald's. And then I went ahead and made myself a single because I'm not finna fight trying to, you know, bite that one, right? So I did it like this just so we guys, you know, so you guys can check it out. As you can see, if you come on in here and take a look at that right there, let me just hold it up. Hold it like this, turn it around. That right there is fire, folks. You guys need to make one of these. Yes, sir. Now, I'm not finna over talking. I'm about to dig in. And if it ain't doing all this, then you ain't got enough condiment on it. You know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, cheers, folks. Mm. 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 Come on in here and look at this. Mm. Man, that is fire. Now, for those of you guys that made the chicken the way I made it like this before, you know what I mean? You already can imagine how this tastes, right? It's having the toasted bun. That right there is like, oh my goodness. And then when I hit it, it got pickle on it too. You know what I mean? Just the whole shebang. It's just a great sandwich. But what I did was I just leveled up McDonald's. And I hate to show you guys this, but look at this right here. You can see the way it was just spewing out the back. <laughs> look, so it actually got a little bit of my Mac sauce on that. Hey, you know what? That ain't no Mac sauce. That's AB sauce. You know what I'm saying? So listen, it's all over that. This right here, we're going to cut this down and just give it to everybody. Let everybody, you know, sample it. But that is a whole lot of chicken right there. The single, if you ask me, really ideally be the way to go. But I want you guys to call uh, McDonald's, hit them on that 800 number, and let them know that somebody else out here got that fire, folks. Now, if you're new to my channel, let me take this time to say thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button, and tell everybody out there there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. And you know what, folks? I'm finna dig in again, and guess what? I'm out. Peace.